Hello, welcome to my video. Um, in Power Apps, there are three types of variables. Local variable, global variable and collections. We already covered local variables and global variables in earlier videos. If you have not seen it, click the link shown in the screen now. So what are collections? Collections is a special kind of data source and it's a really powerful one. They are local to the app and not backed by a connection to a service in the cloud. So the information cannot be shared across, across devices, even for the same user or between the users. They operate like any other data source. Uh, it contains rows and columns, um, just like a, a table or a complex array, you can imagine, or a data set. If you're coming from a dot and background, you may uh, you can understand better in that sense. Um, so it can be created and managed dynamically easily. It can be created, deleted or uh, manipulated very easily. So um, in this video, um, what we'll cover today. So in this video, we will see how to create a collection, add rows manually, delete a row from it, add a bunch of rows from another data source. Uh, typically, it's a SharePoint list and display it in a gallery. OK, so let's jump into the examples. So I already have an app open, Canvas app. I'm going to quickly add a button to it. So here we will try to create a collection and add a row to it. So we name it as add item. OK, then on, on select action, I'm going to create collection. It's called collect. Then you need to name the collection name. I'm going to collect uh, the name it as call cars okay i'm going to put a collection of cars and followed by the column names so open and close parenthesis then followed by column name then the value name so the first column name is car name and the value should be um, a5 and the next column i'm going to put uh, car model is the second column and the value would be uh, Audi okay then the third column would be year of make so let's put 2001 okay so let's keep it three columns for the moment and we need to close one more bracket okay so this is the syntax so we are creating a collection call uh, C-O-L-L-C-A-R-S call cars is the collection name followed by three uh, co uh, columns inside the collection car name car model and year and we have a value to it so we're creating a collection three we defining three different columns and we putting the first row as well a5 core model is audi and year is 2001 yeah okay okay let's press the f5 over here click on add button it's uh, we can't see it but the record has already been added to the collection um, we can quickly add uh, a gallery to the screen and see what's been going through. Uh, insert gallery. We put a blank gallery for the moment. We drag it to the right side and we connect a data source. In this case, we put the data source as call cars. We add and we need to add controls to it as well. Add an item. So we put uh, a label, text label, and we add another one, and we add another one. So three uh, columns for three different columns. Okay. So the first one would be, let's assign it, align it properly. Okay. Um, in the text property, you can say, we can go back here. So we have inside the gallery, we have three labels. Yeah, so we go to the first label, it says core model, fine. The second label is car name, that's fine. And the last would be, let's change it to year. That's the third column, okay? Right. Okay. Okay, we add another a control to it. We put like a, a rectangle. The reason we are doing is we need to differentiate between each rows. 
So we're going to put it somewhere here. And we set the height to just one. So it looks like a line. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So what we did is we added a gallery. We put the data source as the collection that we created using this button click. And we added three different labels. And each label is pointing to the three different columns that we created, which is uh, first one is the car model. The second one is the car name. And the third is the year make. Okay. Let's click on FI again. So you can see clearly if you click on the add button again, it's going to recreate again. Yeah. So once click, it keep on adding the new items, which we don't want to happen. So we need some way to clear the values. So that's where we see the next function. Uh, we name this uh, button as clear. And again, in the action on select property, we're going to clear the collection. The code is simple, clear, followed by the collection name, which is call cars. OK, good. Press F5, clear, it clears. Add an item, it adds. OK, perfectly simple. So what if you don't want two buttons, you just need one button to do both the functionalities. I want to clear whatever it is inside the collection before adding any. So we can do that. We add another button, another button, bring it down here. Uh, let's add clear and collect. Okay, uh, we go copy the same code from the add item go to the new button on select you're going to put the difference is we're going to add a keyword called clear so the clear collect is it first clears whatever it's in the collection before adding any so that's simple so if you fire away now if you click it cleared and add if you click one more time it doesn't duplicate yeah unlike the first button if you click on add item it keeps on adding but the, uh, the, the, the clear and collect is you, it clears whatever it's the value in the collection and then adds just one row. So you, you can avoid duplication based on your business scenario. So based on each and every uh, logics that you're writing inside your code, you can use either of these. So next we will see how to create a collection from another data source, which is SharePoint list in this case. Um, so how you can create uh, a collection from a SharePoint list. So uh, let's jump on to the SharePoint list in the SharePoint site. So I have a, a SharePoint list here in my SharePoint site called cars and I have the same three columns created and I also have an additional column called user ID just to differentiate ones and twos. Yeah. So I want to load this a list as such the list data as a data source on click of a button. So um, I'm going to pull this data. Uh, on click of a button and load it into a collection again um, uh, for um, you could do also do this uh, on the app start as well based on your scenario for but for this demonstration I will just show you on click of a button yeah back to the app now let's add another button bring it down oops call it as load from SharePoint list Okay. Right. So now we need to establish a connection between the this SharePoint site, yeah, and to my app. So let's add a connector. Go back connector. Put the SharePoint connector. Add an app. All web parts is my site. Click the cars list and click connect. Okay. As you can see on the left side, the cars from the SharePoint site has been already connected to our app. So now we have can um, establish the connection and we can create the collection as well. So on select property of this button, yeah, going back to the on select property. So what I'm do, trying to do is iterate all the rows that the uh, SharePoint list data source has, which is cars and populate into my existing collection, okay? So the code is for all means you're iterating all the rows from the data source. Yeah. Um, for all cars 
is the data source and for is collect is the same value call cost open the bracket car name and it's the car name as well because the column name from the collection name and the um, the one in the SharePoint list was same followed by car model car model then car year sorry just year close it close this one as well and close this one as well okay um, basically we are iterating all the rows in the cards SharePoint list data source and using the collect to go through one by one rows and populating in our temporary collections and the column this is the column name of my uh, collection and this is from the SharePoint list column name it sometimes make confusion so just to avoid have um, some kind of a prefix, uh, prefix or suffix based on your requirement i normally put c in front of every uh, collections column name so just to avoid confusion you know but for this example we don't do because we already have a, a collection created with the same names okay uh, let's click f5 let's see what happens so click load from the response list as you can see all the columns from the this SharePoint list has been pulled and shown in the in my um, collection okay let's clear one more time and do SharePoint list yeah okay so um, as you can see everything is being displayed here so what if you don't want to bring all the rows and records from the data source and what if you want to have just a, a filtered items of the SharePoint list okay so uh, let's go back to the SharePoint list. I want to just bring only the cars belonging to the user ID one or two. Yeah. Um, let's put here. Let's show an example where you can put uh, a text input. Let's put it like here. And we're going to call it. Sorry. Oops txt user ID. okay right okay so on click i will enter the user id in this text box and click on the load so based on that whatever the user id entered here it will filter based on the uh, entered value okay go back to the same so instead of bringing all the rows from the cars i'm going to bring a filtered view filtered rows from the data source so i'm going to apply some filter here so the code is filter cars yeah and add the user id equals to value of the text box i have entered here text box dot text converting into the value okay so I'm filtering the cars and only for user ID whatever I have entered into the text value so this value of uh, txt user ID dot text is uh, this may be all the things then the, the characters entered in the text box will be a string variable so I'm converting into a string integer variable yeah and passing it to the user ID column and filtering it and that will be acting as uh, a source to the collection and only those filtered rows will be inside my call cards yeah okay let's test this Firing. first let's clear and we put one and load one two three four okay so one two three four all for user ready one and for user ready two only two rows okay go back to the collection put two and you're going to add because the collection already has uh, 
uh, rows and that's why it's just appending to the rows. If you want to clear and load it again, it will show only the values. So if you want to clear that first and then add, you can just simply add a code to it, which is go back to the same load from SharePoint site over here and add clear call cast and put semicolon. So semicolon differentiate, this is a separate line of code. And after executing, this is a next line of code to execute, yeah? Okay, let's test this. Load, yeah. There's no duplication, change it to one. Load, and another one, okay? Just to show you, um, so if I uh, put another some incorrect number, it doesn't bring anything because it cleared the value, but it didn't find any matching records. So the collection is zero. So like this, you can play around only for the records required for the user session, which is always recommended rather than bringing in all the records from the data source, which will just kill the performance of the Power Apps. Um, so that's it for this video. If you like it, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.